Okay, so, hi, I'm going to be sitting through this talk, sorry. I managed to fall down a couple stairs and wrench my back, so standing's not an option at the moment. Darn. Anyway, uh, so grab for evil. My job, I am at CERT, I am a security researcher, and my job for my boss is find bad guys. And he doesn't care how I do it, which means I have pretty much an awesome job that can't be beat. I mean, I could co use a stack of tarot cards and say I found evil, and as long as I could replicate it, he is a happy camper. <laughs> so this time I used grep. So then we have a nice legalese that CMU insists I put out. Everyone read it? Great, moving on. <laughs> hey, they told me to put it up there for three minutes, and I laughed hysterically at them, seriously. <laughs> no one wants to look at that. Anyway, so this all started with the evil bit. And no one implements the evil bit. It's like, you know, BGP sec, no one does that either. DNS sec, not enough of that either. So we don't have BG, the evil bit. But so I can't look through Netflix flow and find the evil bit. That would make my job so easy. So I couldn't do it in packets. So I did it in domain names, because I have domain names. I have tons of domain names. I have a passive DNS database. It's awesome fun. I have it going back to 2011. I have a lot of data. So. I looked for DDoS, because I hate DDoS. DDoS is used to wake me up. <laughs> I really hate DDoSes. You want to buy a DDoS? EasyDDoS.com. Hey, DDoS.su, another DDoS site. And another one. I mean, seriously, these people are just sitting out there going, hi, come buy a DDoS. Attack DDoS.info. Now, these slides are open. You guys can take these slides and do whatever you want with them. And you'll probably notice that some of these domains are gone, darn but some of them are still around. This one's gone, darn it. I liked this one. I was really looking forward to see what the DDoS.ninja was gonna come up with. There was also a DDoS goat. Unfortunately, I did not screenshot the DDoS goat. <laughs> but seriously, a DDoS goat. <laughs> so let's digress into DDoS a bit, because did I mention I hate DDoS? Yeah. I hate anything that wakes me up at three in the morning and expects me to do something about it. Luckily, not my job anymore. So, why DDoS? I actually did a serious amount of research on why people DDoS. And they DDoS because they're jerks, and that's putting it politely. They DDoS for revenge. I mean, the spam house thing was a revenge. Mirai was gaming and revenge. Um, there's been some little bits of DDoS. Apparently, there's a tack on Bitcoin you can do where there's a DDoS involved. Never actually looked into it. But it's an asymmetric attack. Because I'm like, follow the money, find the money, shut them down. Why DDoS? It's cheap. I mean, it's seriously cheap. There are free stressors that say, we'll DDoS for a couple of minutes for you for free. And then again, I went on the dark web, which was a really great experience. If you haven't done that, it is so much fun. And there used to be a thing called the Alpha Bay where you could buy just about anything and then some, including all the DDoSes you wanted. And I could get one for five bucks. And then the FBI shut it down. Darn it. And then I searched the web, because why not? I found it for 10 bucks. Why go to the dark web when I could just do it online for 10 bucks? And I wanted to go buy these things, right? I'm a researcher. I want to know what I get into when I DDoS something. So I'm like, boss man, I want to buy DDoSes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> that was his reaction. You want to what? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, you're not doing that one. I'll let you get a lot, a lot of stuff, but that's not happening. <sighs> Although there is a researcher at NYU, Damon McCoy, who has actually gone out and buy DDoSes. And if you look at his paper, which is pretty interesting, a good chunk of it is the process he had to go through with the IRB before he could actually DDoS anything. Oh, well. So, traditional attacker model, okay? All guys remember this, right? The attacker goes through infrastructure, and then there's a victim, and the victim goes, crap. So, now we have the anti-DDoS vendors. All those wonderful ones. Everyone has their own anti-DDoS now, right? So you have the victim puts the investment into the anti-DDoS defender, the DDoS says, I'm gonna DDoS you, and they go, <laughs> that's nice. Nice of you to think of that. <laughs> so, that stops DDoSes, right? No more DDoS happening, everyone happy, right? 
wrong. Well, of course, you guys know this. But here's the part that I was really annoyed with when I found out. The victim, why the heck did this happen to these slides? The attacker has their infrastructure. Some of these attackers invest with anti-DDoS providers to keep their websites up so that they can sell their DDoSs. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I wish I was kidding. So the victim is going, look, I'm paying for no one to be able to DDoS me. And the other guy's going, <laughs> I'm paying so I can. <laughs> so want to buy a DDoS? These are now stressor. By the way, if you want to re reproduce this, you can look for DDoS. That also gets you lots of domains like kiddos. But you can also look for booter and stressor, and there's all over the place. So stress networks booter, DDoS for sale. So I'm going to these websites, right? And I'm, aside from the fact that my IT department is freaking out like mad because I shouldn't be going to these places, I finally went around them. They don't not freak out about me anymore, much. I found this site. You know what this is? This is Cloudflare protecting my DDoS provider. And they're not the only ones. Blazing Fast also does it. I'm not happy with either one of them right now. Um, seriously, I spent a lot of time. I actually just went through my DNS data and said, give me all the domains with Cloudflare name servers, and then tell me how many of them are DDoSers, and let's see how many of them are still up. And guess how many of them are still up? Exactly. Which is kind of, well, annoying to me. But a lot of these things, the domains were, I would basically have to take my day's passive DNS data and look at them for that day to find these domains because in the next day or two, they were gone. But if they were using Cloudflare, they are still up. If they're using Blazing Fast, there's a good chance they're still up. Although Blazing Fast does tend to take some down. But there's also a Chinese ISP supporting them. Because, well, it's China. Um, it's another one thing to protect them directly, but what about other support? Hey, I found YouTube videos telling me how to DDoS with their DDoS sites. More than one. More than two. I found three. And then I quit looking because, I mean, at that point, I was pretty sure I know how to DDoS someone. Although I do know how to DDoS someone because I actually once wrote a DDoS program, but I'm probably not the only one in this room that's done that, right? Maybe? <laughs> No one's going to admit to it, are you? OK, well, it's my living. It's my job. It's what I do. We also have Blogspot sites, blogspot.ru. I mean, I just felt like I was going through an interesting trek on the internet and laughing hysterically in my office. It was great fun. And SourceForge has want to do your own DDoS, and so does GitHub. So, I mean, DDoS is everywhere, and it really annoys the heck out of me. But thank God I don't get woken up at 3 in the morning anymore by it. Yay. So, I mean, it makes sense that these domains are out there, right, with DDoS in the name, right? They kind of make sense. It's marketing. You want to, they want you to buy their DDoSs, so they've got to be able to some way for you to find them, DDoS, booter, stressor. And they want a low barrier to entry because they want, well, I've been known to call them Joe Random Idiot. Apologies to anyone named Joe. <laughs> I also call them Joe Random Manager, but they want your basic person who's clicking and pointing at their website to be able to go, yeah, I want to DDoS that guy, here's 50 bucks. Because it's really, in the grand scheme of money-making things in the malware community, DDoS is way down there at the end. There's not much. The one with all the money is ransomware. So I went looking for botnets. Because why would someone buy a botnet? Well, why not? Botnet.cc? You want to buy a botnet? It's a revolutionary IP test platform. It's not a botnet. <laughs> that one's a botnet. <laughs> Definitely a botnet there. Going to have a botnet. Everyone's got to have a botnet. Um, more botnets. I mean, I had a grand time looking through these websites. I, and I could buy botnets all over the place. I wasn't allowed to buy those either. <sighs> really got to have a chat with my boss on that one. Cythosia Botnet, Mirai Botnet. This website's down, by the way. I know, you're upset. You can't buy your own Mirai Botnet. 
This one is still up, freetrojanbotnet.com. You can go get samples of malware that are botnets in Trojans. Uh, at least according to my coworkers in the malware community, they're botnets. And then this is one of my favorite websites. Okay, I admit there's no cybersecurity here at all, but I just love the website, okay? <laughs> Unfortunately, it's down. <laughs> I know, it's very upset that it's down. But unfortunately, it is, but, you know, phishing. Um, so one thing I, didn't, I did go looking for, but I didn't put in this result at all, was spam. And the reason I didn't do anything with spam is because all the anti-spam people have spam in their domain names. And so I was spending all my time going, you know, no, anti-spam, anti-spam, anti, -spam, anti -spam, I give up. So there may be some spammers that use spam in their domain names, but there's so much anti-spam out there, I couldn't find any. Same thing with malware. All the malware domains were basically related to the anti-malware people, which is great. I mean, I hate malware, I hate, mal and, and well, I don't say I hate it, it keeps me employed, but um, these domains, these places are great, but they're not going to be part of, you know, there's bad guys here. And I didn't even go looking for Trojan because there's too many, uh, there's too many football teams with the name Trojan. <laughs> so I wasn't going looking through that to find me some Trojans, okay? They're just, sorry, it's not going to happen. And I actually did the botnet one about seven years ago and found a lot other stuff has been as well. This is not a new problem. This is not a new thing that's suddenly shown up. It's just entertaining to me. So here's the one and another one. Why on earth would you put ransomware in a domain name? Unless you're basically an anti-ransomware place. Anyone? Ta-da! Microsoft protection from malware, Microsoft protection from ransomware.info. We're gonna hang off the Microsoft name and we're gonna claim that we're, yeah, said that there's a virus in your ransomware and you need to call us at this technical support number. Anyone wanna guess who owns that number? Mail order brides. <laughs> No one was going to guess that one, sorry. That one, that cracked me up to no end. Yeah, okay, I'm going to call a mail order fried company. <laughs> okay, this has been one of the most fun presentations I've ever done, and I, this is not even counting the fact that two months ago I gave one where I got to use the phrase yummy nudity. So there's another one. Ransomware threat detective, remove it now. Remove it. We must remove it now. You go to this website. You must. It's scary. Find the ransomware. And so there's a phone number. Well, depending on who you ask, when you Google this number, it either belongs to Microsoft or Apple or iTunes, and I even think Yahoo is a result. Um, I'm going to go out on a big limb here and say it's a bad one. Don't call this number. I don't know why I should say that. It's not good. So then I went looking for ransomware and text records because I have passive DNS, I have grep. Why not? I found some. The text records are fun. Text records, a while back, about two or three years ago, there was uh, Rick rolling in text records. And people look at me like I'm making this up, like, no, seriously, there are URLs and text records. You went to them, you got Rick rolled. Seriously, it happened. And I thought Rickrolling was way dead, and two or three years ago, it was back up in text records. So this was a URL I found in a text record. I mean, text records are essentially the scribbles, right? There's, there's no predefined real use for them. Some people use them for various things, but, you know, there's all kinds of stuff in text records. And I found ransomware. And I took this ransomware, and I handed it to a malware analyst and said, what did I find? And she said, you found ransomware. I said, awesome, score! But well, why the heck did I find ransomware in a text record? Of course, I could say, why did I get rickrolled out of a text record? <laughs> I can't answer that question either. But if you, if you ever have, want to be entertained, 
and you have a bunch of text records, there are script tags in text records. And they point you to URLs, and some of those URLs can be quite interesting. Just don't go through your IT department when you do that. You can make them upset. You can guess, oh, I know that. So another thing I learned. <laughs> all the things I learned in this day. I learned all kinds of fun things. Do not go to sites with both bank and login in the domain name. Don't do that. So you'd think with all those other fun websites, I would have probably hit Google Safe Browsing all over the place. I didn't. I didn't hit Google Safe Browsing until I tried to go to this. Bankofamerica.com.login.signin. Blah, blah, blah. I mean, the domain name was like, that long. Which, by the way, is another interesting thing to look at. If you look at domain names with lots of labels, you're probably going to find something very, very interesting. So don't go to that site. Although it does kind of look like a Bank of America website. Don't go to it. And this one was PNC banking. Blah, 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 blah. PNC bank online banking login dot com. Yeah, don't go to it. Because it looks, it doesn't really look like PNC banking. But there's a lot of, I went looking again recently, and there's a lot of still banking login sites that claim to be, oh, we're the first step for you to log into your bank, go to our website, and then click on our thing, and then you can log in. And I wouldn't do that for any amount of money. Because they'll get all my money. So it was nice of them to tell me their bank size. I thought I was really sweet. So what else did I went looking for? Well, zero days. Zero days are fun. You want to buy a zero day? Zero day dot today will sell you zero days. Now, I have yet to buy any because, again, I have to talk my boss into going when he's going, you want to buy what? I mean, it's one thing if I want disk space in my office. I have 60 terabytes in my office. It's another thing if I want to go buy a zero day somewhere, he just kind of freaks out at me. I don't know why. But yeah, you can buy zero days. And they even have some free ones on there as well. So if you really need zero days. There's another zero day website I found recently. I actually found it through looking in Twitter, because there's another fun place to go searching for things, uh, that actually has zero days as screenshots. So there's no selling them, but they're pre-done zero days that say for this CVE, this is the zero, this is the website, or this is the attack, um, which is kind of fun. So this looks easy, right? This is the part that I, I use to when I'm talking to people. They're like, "Oh, security is easy. See what you did? You found all the bad guys. You found all the DDoS sites. You found all the zero days. You found all the botnets, right? This is an easy job you have." And I'm like, "Well, it's a fun job I have. I mean, look what I got to do." <laughs> And I got paid to do that. <laughs> but that's not even including the malware that's out there. I didn't even go searching for malware names, which I'm sure I would have found some interesting things if I'd done that. Although I wouldn't guess I'd find anything for Zeus because, well, Zeus shows up everywhere. On the other hand, these are the numbers for my blacklist report. So I put out blacklist reports for the, uh, from 2013 to 2017, the last five or six of them were every six months. So we broke everything down into six month chunks and said, how many domains are in each blacklist in the six months? Millions. So the next thing, I'm, I'm like, you're not even finding a drop in the bucket with these guys. They want to be found. It's not a, it's not a hard thing to find. On the other hand, People are like, well, of course you're finding them in there. There's uh, you know, massive, massive overlap on these lists. Check my blacklist report. No, there isn't. The other thing they say is, oh, well, it's DGA. Everyone's filling up their domain names, blacklists with DGA domains, domain, dynamically generated algorithmic domains. Well, I'm actually working on a project right now where I'm looking at DGAs and DGADAs, and it's called Any Degata Unita. I have to find my entertain somewhere. Um, so DGA, DAs, the detectors and versus the DGAs. And so we're basically looking at that argument of these blacklists are being populated by DGA domains, so that's why they're so big. And the answer is no, they're not. I mean, they are in some respects. They do have DGA domains on there, but that's not everything in there either. 
So if you have all the DGA algorithms and say, I'll just take all those domains from all the DGAs and yank them off there and yank off all this other stuff that she's found that's so easy, then there's basically nothing left for a blacklist. Nope, <laughs> still got full blacklists. Um, so I have a coworker who has the opinion that, well, they're just making stuff up. I can't answer that one. Uh, I don't think, I would not say like Spam House is making things up at all. Spam House is pulling it straight from spam. I would not say that they're making it up. On the other hand, when you talk to someone about how they, how are you create your blacklist? And they're like, well, we use this magic machine language learning, blah, blah, blah. You're like, well, you're making stuff up. <clears throat> Which is apparently not polite to say to them, so I don't say that anymore. So we're not making a dent in the total badness at all. Taking these domains off, taking the DGA domains off, and if you guys are really interested in DGA, I'll come back next time and tell you all about my DGA DA stuff. So finding these bad guys that want to be found, I mean, they want to sell you a DDoS. They want to sell you a botnet. I don't know why they put ransomware in their domain name because that does not make any sense to me at all. But the banking ones make sense to me because they want you to think that you're going to be logging into your bank. The Bank of America .bank .login someone who doesn't know what they're looking at, they're going to click on that and they're going to try to log in. Okay, yes, that makes sense. Ransomware doesn't, still makes no sense to me at all. But the other guys are trying to sell you something. And one of the things in marketing is you've got to have a good shtick. You've got to have a tag that people will know what they're looking for. So if they want to buy a DDoS, they want to buy a booter or a stressor, and if anyone knows why they're called booters and stressors instead of just DDoS, I'd be entertained to know why. Um, but they want to sell you that product. And on the other hand, we have then Cloudflare and Blazing Fast who are essentially saying, yes, we'll let them sell you that product. On one hand, on the other hand, we're going to protect you from them at the same time. I don't get that one either. And that's, that's all the uh, slides I have. Like I said, these are, this is an open slide. If anyone wants to look at the deck, that'd be great. Yeah. West yeah. George's bike grid. Um, I can answer your question about booter and stressor at least. Oh, um, that would be great, thank you. Booter is, is uh, meant to be something that attacks like a, a gamer. If you know the IP address of the gamer, you point it at that and it DOS attacks them enough to knock them offline so they're not on the game anymore and in, in effect booting them from the game. Um, stressor is just a, hey, you want to stress test your website? Here's a way to throw a bunch of traffic at it. That's how they act like they're being legitimate. Oh, so they're legit. Yes. Gotcha. The big quotes. <laughs> Hi. Chris Morrow, Google. Um, I have some questions about passive DNS and really your use of it here. First off, can you tell me which sources you use? Just the company. Oh, uh, for that the provides? passive DNS, yeah. uh, we we had a contract with Farsight. Okay, great. Um, and I know someone who's using Farsight and another spam house's data actually to do a bunch of interesting research, which looks like yours, but it's not related to DOS stuff. I think you might want to talk to the person. Sure. It's a pretty wide ranging. Looks pretty bad actually. I'm always for finding bad stuff in DNS. Okay, I'll come talk to you afterwards. That'd be great. Thanks. Uh, hi, uh, John Todd with Quad9. Again, getting to kind of the passive DNS question, you said that it was difficult to determine whether your block lists have things that are legitimate or not in them. Like, are they just full of DGA domains or are they just garbage or what? But it's, if you have passive DNS, have you done an analysis to look at your passive DNS and compare that against your block list to see what percentage are actually active over what period of time to see if they're legit or if they're just dead? Uh, uh, we're risk? actually working on that one right now. I did look at the, the very first blacklist report we put out was a 300 some odd pages. 99% of it is tables. So I tell people to read it if they're having an um, insomnia attack. And that one, <laughs> that one we did a lot of uh, DNS expansion to see if you know, people are like, well, of course they're not matching on domain names. They're matching on the IP addresses of the domain names. So we looked at the percentage of the domain names, that actually, things that actually resolved. But right now I'm working on the timing thing as well. Okay, thank you. Hi, Alan Shackelford, Johns Hopkins University and Medical, medical Institutions. Um, if you have a, an enterprise DNS that will not resolve any domain that's newer than a week old, and you're pushing definitions to your desktops on a re very regular basis, very carefully maintained, how effective do you think these guys are going to be? I mean, you, you're talking millions of these domains, and I've got users that will click any link. <laughs> but what... what what we've tried to do is put a Band-Aid on a bone that's sticking out through the arm. Yeah, I, I totally understand. 
How effective can that possibly be? I mean, I'm dealing with PhDs that know a whole lot more than I do. Yeah, I, yeah, I work with some of them. Um, <laughs> I'm the CEO. You send it to me, so it must be important, and I must click on it. Yeah. Yeah, my grant's bigger than your grant. You know, that, that, so, yeah. that sort of thing. As I, I don't know. I mean, that's, that's back in the user education thing, which... We've, we've enjoyed some success, but, yeah. you know, the threat is always there. And I was just curious on your opinion. Is there any thing other than a DNS that will not resolve any domain less than a week old, push the definitions to everybody, counts, constantly counsel them not to click a link, which they do anyway, but uh, we've enjoyed some success, but I, I want to do more. I, that's not actually really, I look at historical things as to what actually happened. I haven't looked at stopping things from happening, but I'd like to talk to you about it more. <laughs> okay, like. I'll see you. Yeah. Thanks so much. Hi, uh, Nick Harlan, Microsoft. Uh, curious. Um, most of the queries that I saw in your slides and the pages were all in English language. Um, any research into uh, similar phrases in uh, other languages? Or? No, I haven't looked at other languages yet. Um, I was mainly concerned with English because uh, this project was originally going to go to a bunch of managers to explain to them why they should give us money. <laughs> because security is not as easy as it looked and when I was talking to English managers, yes. But yeah, um, I actually have done some poking lately, and I have found some really interesting things in Spanish. Um, but I was actually looking for something else. Uh, I am somewhat, the team I'm on is called Threat Ecosystem Analysis, but right now it's attached to the vulnerability team, so they have me looking at vulnerabilities. So I was finding bad guys again. Uh, hi, Eric Kunke with Noel Communications. I wanted to ask, what are your thoughts on the use of international domain names for uh, homogriff attacks, where the domain name is actually xn dash dash, and there might be one vowel or a couple of vowels in something that looks like Wells Fargo, where it's actually a Cyrillic character or a Greek character or so on? And um, given that domain validated TLS certificates are now free and effectively fully automated, um, how possibly grepping through certificate transparency logs for things that have been issued that might look like a homogriff attack might be a possible method of analysis? So one of the things I've looked at for that is um, I've looked at bit flipping for one thing, because that was actually a problem. When you go look at the, take the domain, switch it to binary, flip a bit, and it's a bad guy. And apparently there is a researcher who actually, actually resolved most of those. Uh, for the homoglyphs with the uh, uh, multiple character sets, there was actually a proposal put out at MOG a few years ago to, to restrict domains to basically one character set at a time to hopefully stop this. Um, I, I haven't actually gone looking lightly to see how much there is of it, but I'm pretty sure it's still going on. Sorry, uh, I should have said this last time. Uh, so, generally speaking, for people who don't under, don't know about Pasadena, it's the, sort of the, the the query that gets missed in, in the cache server looks up to the outside world. There are a bunch of services. Farsight, in particular, offers the service as a streaming proto, so you can put whatever logic you like: bit flipping, homographs, all kinds of crazy IDN stuff your particular brand, whatever, you can, you can, uh, oh, I should say, I don't work for them, so I don't, so <laughs> I, the although first, I'm going to be a uh, sales pitch. <laughs> actually, that reminds, the first MOG, I was, not MOG, excuse me, the first NANOG I was at, I gave us lightning talk where I was talking about A record poisoning, and one of the things we found was there were some MX records that were actually being, po quote, poisoned and given the wrong IP address, and I found them because the TTL was obscenely huge. Like Google's TTL is standing 300 seconds, these were like five days or a week. Right, there's all, all these oddities you can put in a set of rules right. and so, match against the data in real time. You I actually gave a talk basically saying the same thing, is great. you can do the passive DNS service and look for these guys and find them. Can you, and I can actually tell you that one of the main offenders of do, was doing it when my talk that time is pretty much stopped because I did go looking again recently. Can you post those slides to the list, to the, to the NetLog mailing list, or point you to them? Uh, I can give the, the slides I did however many years ago, I can give those, and there was also a blog post on cert.org okay, on the great. same subject. And uh, one second, I am also the, I have mentioned this before, I am the co-editor-in-chief of a new journal called ACM Digital Threats Research and Practice. We are looking for authors because we are looking for practitioners. We want to be the journal that practitioners can actually come to publish with. So if you have any ideas or just want to talk to me about it, I'll be around. Thank you, Leigh. One, just one last uh, thing to add to your 
session. In, in light of the talk on the, uh, the public resolvers, it would be also good to understand which domains are blocked and which ones are not blocked through their lens as well. So it would be a good follow-up. Thank you again. Excellent talk.